well, I know this is kind of new for us and um, you know, it's a different way to, to be communicating, but really it's all we have right now at this point. It might yeah. be something that if we have to later on, uh, I know it's the end of the year, but depending on kind of what happens with everything, uh, if we have to start out the year doing something like this, or if uh, you know, maybe we want to do something during the summertime, um, I might have a better impression about how to do it with, uh, with all of you that might make a little more sense and could be a little more interactive with the families too. We only have a couple of meetings left. We're trying to, to really just focus on uh, Easter and, and Holy Week. And so I, I just wanted to, to try and offer something by way of how we could communicate, get everybody to, to see our faces again, and, um, and talk just a little bit about the topics I emailed out. Share a little bit about maybe what you're gonna do different this Easter, or uh, some of the traditions you've done in the past, or, or something that you remember from your own childhood uh, that, that we could really just share uh, among one another. I know uh, we're missing out on probably you know, the, the most masses that we would be going to in a week. So it's going to be very different. Um, you know, we're, we're not going on Holy Thursday. We're not going on Good Friday. Uh, there, there's not an Easter vigil that we'd be attending. And we're not even doing Easter. So it's going to look very different this year. Um, but I, I was kind of reading something and it, um, it really made me think too that, you know, back when the disciples were um, celebrating the first Easter, they did it alone as well, and they did it in their households by themselves, um, kind of scared a little bit like we are now that, you know, we're, we're scared about what's going on in our country. Um, so maybe it, it'll give us a little bit of like an insight into what the disciples had to go through that very first Easter when they couldn't celebrate it out in the open uh, with, you know, mass amounts of people. They had to do it behind closed doors. They had to do it in private almost. Uh, at least we have this available to us where we can kind of see each other digitally and virtually, and we can still attend mass um, by going online or, or seeing it on TV. So we kind of have a little bit more than they might have had. Why don't we just start with like Holy Week activities? So really, uh, for me and my family, one of, one of the biggest things that, that we would do during this time is uh, my dad had this really good a uh, sweet bread recipe that he kind of uh, mastered over the years. And uh, my dad passed away when I was in eighth grade, but it's been something that we've continued to do where we always make my dad's Easter bread. And uh, this year will be the first year that we aren't able to do it together, but we're still going to do it kind of similar to what we're doing now where um, we, we do like a Zoom meeting and we all have our mixers out and uh, are still are still going to make the bread together uh, virtually, um, but then you know that's something that that we would take and it would be part of our our Easter feast uh, together. But it was one of the traditions aside from going to mass uh, together that we would kind of do uh, during this time. Well, in my family, we always cook together. Like all of us, we it's a kitchen full of people, and that would be me and then my husband and the three kids. And we've always had Easter together, but two of my kids, one lives in Portland and one's in Baton Rouge now. And the Portland daughter was able to come home and work from home here, but my son in Baton Rouge could not come home. And so uh, we're, we're going to do this Easter. So we're still, like you said, we're still going to basically kind of cook throughout the day together and then plan it where we can eat together and do like a, a video type Zoom kind of meeting. So we can still all be together because this will be our first Easter where we're not all together so yeah that's how we and that's what I would stress to the families is you know try to go pat beyond just calling each other but do the FaceTime and the video and so you can see each other I don't know we used to just always go to confession and then to you know Sunday mass on Easter and then have a dinner like with ham or lamb or whatever you know and my grandma used to always make a candy this divinity candy like little easter eggs and nice. that's how i remember but um i was thinking i was just looking through our book from first grade 
and it doesn't really describe um, the crucifixion or anything very much. And I don't know if nowadays they don't want kids to hear all that, but I just remember hearing the whole story from a nun in first grade, and it was really moving to me. I, w I was crying as a first grader, and um, I just think from that day I've always had my faith, and I, just, I think it's important to, that they should really know, you know, what really went on. It wasn't like just a fun game, so the Easter Bunny or whatever, you know. I, maybe I, if parents could tell their kids the story in the way that they think, you know, is appropriate for their children. There's animated versions of The Passion, too, that they could watch with their families, because I think movies during, fun movies during this week are a good time. To yeah. Spend time doing a family movie, you know, but do like Prince of, watch Prince of Egypt or Ten Commandments or any of those kind of movies that teach our stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be good. Absolutely. And you said something else that's super important, um, going to confession. And uh, I know that, that, um, that some parishes are offering kind of like drive up confessions. I and, saw that. I wonder, how do you do that? <laughs> yeah. So at, at the cathedral, they, they were doing that at, at St. Simon and Jude, where um, you could actually drive up in your car and um, the, the priest would kind of be seated uh, you know, about 10 feet away, six feet away, um, and, and you could do your confession right then and there. Um, so it is, it's important to, to remember that during this time as we're preparing for, for Christ's uh, resurrection and for his death on the cross for our sins, that we're at least making that, that spiritual communion with God again, that we are repentant for our sins. We are sorry for, for uh, you know, all the things that, that we've done to hurt God and, and hurt others. Um, it may not be the easiest thing to do, but at least by some respects, uh, we can make s some sort of uh, repentant act um, by you know, asking God for forgiveness. And then when we have that opportunity to go to actual confession and, and take part in the true sacrament uh, to do it. Um, and I like what you said too about the Stations of the Cross. I, I think, it, it's important to at least tell the true meaning of what's going on now. There, there's a lot of other things going on in our world where uh, we talk about Easter and yeah, like you said, the, the Easter bunny and, and the candy and, and all of that. And, and even uh, the true meaning behind the Easter egg itself, um, you know, at, that really back in, in Roman times, that, that was a, a symbol of, of rebirth. And uh, even the, the cracking of, of the Easter egg was kind of like Christ uh, breaking out of uh, the tomb. So being able to kind of explain the, the tradition that goes along with the Easter egg, which a lot of people associate with Easter anyways, but finding a way to, to watch the stations that's appropriate for your kids, or at least talk about them. What about, has anybody been part of a, a Seder meal? Well, so um, I have taught that the last two years in a row to the kids. And so on the uh, last class session before Easter, we usually do, do we like kind of act out the Seder meal. And so it's maybe something the parents can look up and, and do that with their kids. It's really kind of fun because it teaches, uh, it just kind of teaches the story of the, um, when um, the Israelites, you know, when the mass exodus, when they left uh, Egypt and freed themselves from, from slavery and bondage. And it's, I just know the kids love it because we try different types of foods that they've never had before. Yeah. And, and they actually end up really liking the food. Uh, but so we always do lamb and I always like try to spice it up really good with rosemary and garlic and they end up liking it pretty well. And I, as we go through the Seder meal, I teach them what each food, what each food represents. For instance, uh, the lamb represents, um, well, the blood of the lamb represents the blood that was put on all the doors that were meant to be passed over, where the firstborn was to be passed over during Passover. And then the, um, the mar, which is the horseradish sauce, that uh, represents the bitterness of uh, the past suffering that when, you know, they were enslaved. And then the horset, which is a mixture of apples and spices and nuts, 
uh, which turns out to be a pretty good little dish. It and is. Like, that was the, very good. The mortar kind of, of, and the mortar from, you know, all the slaves carrying all the mortar and bricks and building all the, the things they had to build back then. And then the matzo, which is the unleavened bread. Well, it's a cracker basically, but it represents the unleavened bread and it symbolizes the freedom of, of, you know, the, the Israelites or the Jews being freed from Egypt. So it's, the kids love it. And so that's why I continue to do it. They always, it's an exciting day because it takes the whole class and they're actually getting to do something and participate in something and have a meal. And we have uh, grape juice that represents wine. And we, you know, talk about the, uh, the whole story of, of the whole story of the Exodus throughout our, throughout the class. I remember one of the first Seder meals. So uh, the the more when when I tried that, my brother somehow convinced me to try like a spoonful of horseradish. Oh and, no! And so I ate it, and I started crying. And oh my gosh, for about five minutes, I couldn't breathe. Um, but then the the harosa, um, the uh, the apple, and um, and nuts, it, it, it just cleared my palate. Like it was yeah. so, it was so tasty and so good. Um, yes. But yeah, the, the Seder meal, it, it's always been a tradition in my family as well. And the little kids, they do love it. They, uh, especially when, when you hide uh, the, the piece of uh, the matzah and they have to try and go and find it. And then, mm -hmm. you know, there's a special prize for, for the child who finds it. But it's a very interactive meal. Not only is it it's teaching us our Jewish roots, um, and what was going on during the time of Moses with uh, the Exodus and everything. Um, but it really gets the children involved because uh, the, the script that you're reading, there, I think there's a, at least four children that have a role where they actually um, ask the, you know, those questions. And then... Questions. Uh, the, yeah. And one the, gets to be the father and one gets to be the mom and wear like the tie. And so they do get to act out. And that's always fun. All right, so um, any, any other real comments here? I know um, maybe some of you haven't gotten an opportunity to share, but like I said, any, anything is really fair game right now as far as what we could share um, during Holy Week or, or maybe a, another just uh, encouragement that we could give to, to the kids, to, uh, to the parents during this time. Well, just ask the parents if they'll take their children to church. Yeah, it's, it, it can't get any easier than it is now because they can sit on their couch and watch it on TV or right. you know, hook up their laptop to the TV and watch it on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, it comes right up. It worked pretty yeah. well. That's right. I did look up, I did just look up at Our Lady of Joy and they're listed as uh, offering confession this Saturday from three to five. Okay. I, I'm not sure how they're doing it, if it's a drive-by or if you have to go into the church or not, but they are offering it. And I even have a daughter that, her last name is Rosenberg. It's my second daughter. He came into the faith. Uh, he was Jewish. So they do have the traditions continuing so the kids don't lose it with the cedar meal and all. And if I would recommend a very, very good book by Brant Petrie. It's called The Jewish Roots of the Eucharist. And it's so rich. It is so good. But then again, I'm from old tradition, so I've always, almost every year, we've watched The Passions, the different movies. I even have the one from, um, um, what's his name, Mel, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Oh, and yeah, then the I have, of the Christ, I also yeah. have the Nativity, the new Nativity, because I'm doing at this time, um, doing the consecration to St. Joseph. And it's so beautiful. And knowing Joseph as our spiritual father, it's so beautiful and it all ties in, of course. And these are things, other things that you can do. Um, if you can get the consecration to St. Joseph, I highly recommend it. We have other things come, that were coming up. I mean, after the week after Easter is going to be the Divine Mercy Sunday. So in addition to saying our rosaries, I'm doing more walking than I ever did. So I get on my walk. I get a, from 
Laudate, you can go in there. It's uh, from St. Luke Productions. You can hear the rosary. So I listen to it as I pray it. And then I go to Trish for the divine mercy. I can do that on my walks. I get both of them in almost every day. It's so beautiful. And we know that we need to pray divine mercy for what's going on throughout Absolutely. the world. So people yeah. can be safe and healthy and to remain holy. So um, those are just some fine recommendations. I, I myself am kind of lost because I don't get to do a lot of the things that I used to do because I'm going to miss laying in front of the cross and giving myself to Christ. It's kind of a loss, but it's not because God is good all the time, all the time. God, God is, is good. good. He's going to make something good out of all this evil that we're going through. Mm -hmm. better oh, there already me. is good. Look at all of the time everybody spends with their family. Exactly. That's, right. that's I mean, what I think. That's great. And the Thank pollution you. is clearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before before we end, um, I wanted to ask uh, Deacon Bob if you wouldn't mind just saying a prayer for all of us, and if we could all just kind of join in prayer. And um, I hope everybody continues to be healthy and, and safe and well, and uh, you know for a very blessed Holy Week and Easter, and uh, possibly you know we might be able to get together and do this again. Yes. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We give you thanks. We especially thank you for the gift of our salvation through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for us, who has risen from the dead to give us new life in his kingdom. We ask for the Blessed Mother to wrap us in her mantle and for St. Joseph to cover us with his cloak so that we may remain safe, healthy, and holy. We ask this in the name of our Lord. So may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit fall upon you and your family now and forever, keeping you holy, safe, and healthy. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much for taking the time to do this. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Bye. 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 Miss, miss you all. Bye. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.